Yam Tok Nyam, a beef salad from the northeastern part of Thailand. So the first thing we're going to do is marinate our steaks and I'm using water buffalo tenderloin for this recipe. You can use sirloin or any other cut you like. And we're going to be marinating our steaks with some fish sauce, some soya sauce and some black pepper. And give it all a good mix and let it marinate for half an hour at least. And while the steak is marinating, we're going to prep our salad. Now mint is an essential ingredient in this salad, so get some fresh mint and just pluck the leaves from the stalks. If the leaves are too big, you can chop them up, but I prefer to leave them whole. Once you've plucked the mint, we're going to take some coriander or cilantro and roughly chop it up. This is another fresh herb that goes in the salad. Then I'm going to take a spring onion and just cut that into rounds. This will add even more freshness. This is quite a herbaceous salad. And I'm going to take about half a red onion and thinly slice it into half moons. Now normally you would use Thai shallots for this but since I didn't have access to those, a red onion will just do the job. And I'm also going to take two limes and I'm going to cut them and then juice them. Of course, if you want the salad to be more sour, you can use more limes, but I think two should suffice for me. Next, I'm going to toast some sunflower seeds in a hot pan and you want to toast this till they are nice and golden brown. Now, actually, this isn't part of the original recipe. Normally, they use jasmine rice, which has been toasted and then ground into a powder. But since that's not really keto friendly, we're substituting that with these sunflower seeds. So you're just going to toast them till they get nice and golden brown and as they turn brown you're going to take it off the heat. You're going to let it cool and then put it into a mortar and pestle and then grind it into a nice fine powder. Now this is going to take a bit of elbow grease and I was thinking to myself why didn't I just use the food processor. But this also explains how Thai people are so skinny. I guess it takes a lot of work to eat this kind of food. So you definitely get a workout in grinding these. Anyway, once they are ground, they are ready. Now, I also decided to toast some pork rinds. Now, this is again not part of the actual recipe. This is another substitute for that toasted rice powder that they make. Anyway, toast your pork rinds and once they are done, get them off the stove. Once they are cooled, they go into the mortar and pestle and you grind that into a powder, a nice pokey powder. So we're basically going to be using the sunflower seed powder and this as well. And that's it. These are going to be the crunchy elements of our salad. So once the beef is done marinating, it's time to cook it. And like I said earlier, this is normally cooked over a charcoal grill. But since I do not have that and I don't even have a stovetop grill, I'm just going to go with my trusty cast iron skillet. And if you're wondering what was the oil I'm using, well, that's chicken fat to give it some extra flavor. Anyway, get those steaks in, let them cook. Now, obviously, the cooking time for the steak is going to vary on what cut of meat you have used. Since I'm using tenderloin, I've kept them as really big pieces. So it will take some time. And of course, I make sure I cook it on all sides. That's the thing about a steak. You've got to seal it on all sides. And of course, if you can get beef with some fat, that is even better. But I don't have that luxury here in India. I am just treated to lean meat. Anyway, let those steaks cook and once they are fully done, take them out onto a plate and let them rest. Now, once the meat has rested, I'm going to pour out those resting juices. This is going to be part of our dressing. So don't throw it away. It's liquid gold. Anyway, now there's nothing left to do but cut the steak. Obviously, for one portion of salad, I'm not going to use half a kilo of steak. So I'm just going to cut up one of the fillets and it looks perfect to me. I'm going to cut them up into nice bite-sized pieces. And oh yeah, that steak looks so good. I could eat it already. Anyway, I probably will eat a piece. Alright, so now it's time to assemble the salad and we're going to put our beef in a bowl. We're going to throw in our onions as well. The red onions and the spring onions. And then I'm just going to give everything a good mix just to get things in motion. Then in go our other ingredients. Some chili flakes, some fish sauce, the lemon juice, some sucrine gold or you can also use erythritol or stevia for some sweetness. 
and in go our crunchy elements, the ground up sunflower seeds and the crushed pork rinds, the coriander, the mint and give it all a good mix. You want everything to be mixed in nicely. Oh and I almost forgot the most important ingredient, the resting juices from the beef. Anyway, give that all a good mix and that's it my friends, our salad is ready. That's how easy it is. So ladies and gentlemen, there you have it, our spicy Thai beef salad is ready. Anyway, enough jibber jabber, time to taste. Beef tongue. For this recipe, you're going to need one beef tongue, some fresh peppercorns, two bay leaves, salt, three to four cloves of garlic and one onion. Now we're going to be making our beef tongue in a pressure cooker and we're just going to put in the tongue and all the ingredients into the pressure cooker with about half a liter of water and then just pressure cook it for about half an hour, maybe 20-25 minutes depending on the size of the tongue. Now in the event that you do not own a pressure cooker, you can just put this in some water and boil it for a good hour and a half. That should make it nice and tender. So after about 25 minutes, I opened that pressure cooker and checked out the beef tongue. It really looked good from the outside. But unfortunately, the beef tongue was not fully cooked through because I had not defrosted the meat properly before cooking it. So I put it back in for another 20 minutes. And this time, when it was done, it was done. Oh yeah, look at that beef tongue. Now I wanted to make a delicious sauce to go with the beef tongue so I strained all the liquid from the pressure cooker and separated all that onion and garlic and peppercorns from the liquid. Give the liquid 2 minutes to settle down and you will see a layer of oil on top. I removed all that oil from the top and saved it for later. We'll use a bit in this recipe but the rest of it just keep it in your fridge and fry everything in it. Then in the same pressure cooker I put in a bit of that oil and I began to fry the onion and garlic and the peppercorns from the liquid. And you want to get some color on this and so I gave it a good mix and cooked it for a bit. I did feel though that I wanted a little more flavor so I added half an onion and this is just to add that slight good lovely caramelized flavor that nice richness to it. So I fried the onions then I was like hmm, I need to make this a mushroom sauce so I added two chopped mushrooms. Now the idea is when I blend this the mushrooms will actually give the thickness to the sauce so I don't need flour and I don't need to make a roux to make a nice thick gravy. So once the mushrooms are fried I add in some of that liquid the stock which we created out of that beef tongue and then you add in the rest. Once the mushrooms have softened, we're done here. Then you pour this entire mixture in your blender and blitz it. Once that's done, I'm going to strain it and I will get a silky, smooth, lovely sauce. And to finish it off, I'm just going to chop some fresh basil and add it to the sauce. It will give you a lovely hint of freshness. And that's it. Chop your beef tongue into whatever size pieces you like. You can eat this cold like a cold cut. You can do tons of things with it. And that's it. Your beef tongue is ready. Oh, that looks delicious. Of course, I'm going to pour some of that sauce over that beef tongue. And now it's time to taste. Keto beef salad and we're going to do this in an Asian style. Oh yeah. Alright, so we're going to start our salad by making the dressing and for that we're going to need one clove of garlic that has been minced. To that I'm going to add one teaspoon of soya sauce. Try and find one that has got less carbs in it but it's just a teaspoon so it won't kill you. One teaspoon of vinegar, a squirt or two of fish sauce. A squeeze of lime juice, a whole tablespoon of peanut butter, you want the stuff that doesn't have any sugar in it, and a tablespoon of olive oil. And 
give that all a good mix. Now taste your dressing for seasoning. At this point I thought I would add some extra olive oil in as well. So another tablespoon of olive oil just to up the fat content. And I checked it for seasoning and I added some salt, some pepper and two drops of stevia. And give it all a good mix. Now I'm just going to prep our mushrooms and when you're using enoki mushrooms just cut off the end part of it and separate the mushrooms. Then I'm going to give it a quick rinse under the tap in a colander so that the water can drain out. And our mushrooms are ready. Now I'm going to take a fillet of beef. You can also use curd steak, hanger steak, any steak that you like. I get tenderloin in India so I'm using that. And I'm going to cut it into nice even strips. Once the beef has been cut, I'm going to season it with some salt and some curry powder. Yup, you heard that right. Curry powder. Now, there is nothing in India called curry powder. But there is something in the rest of the world called curry powder. I first encountered curry powder in the UK when I was eating uh, french fries with curry sauce. And there was something very unique about that curry flavor. It was like nothing I had ever tasted before. And I did kind of like it. So I dug in deeper and I found out it was something sold in Asian grocery stores. And to my surprise when I went to Bangkok, I found it. I found that same curry powder that I had in the UK. And so I said to myself, I got to use this because it's going to give the beef a... Mm. It's going to bring out all the umaminess of the beef. So anyway, let's season it with this curry powder. And then give it all a good mix. Now I'm going to heat up my pan on the stove. And once the pan gets nice and hot, I'm going to add in some oil. And then it's time to fry the beef. Now I don't want to crowd the pan so I'm going to fry the beef in two batches. So this is the first batch that I'm frying. Make sure you turn the beef once it gets a nice color on it. I'm still not totally comfortable with the stainless steel pan. I still kind of prefer a non-stick pan but you know what? You gotta practice and you gotta get better. Anyway once the first batch of beef has been cooked I'm going to remove it from the pan. And then I'm going to fry the second batch. So put in the beef, let it cook for a bit and once you think it's done, flip it over, mix it all up, make sure you get a good color on that beef and then remove it from the pan. Now in that same pan I'm going to add almost a tablespoon of butter and once the butter has melted I'm going to add in my mushrooms and I'm going to stir fry them. Now I'm going to season the mushrooms with a bit of salt. Now you just want to cook the mushrooms down and you want to sort of deglaze the pan with the mushrooms so that they catch all that fawn that's on the bottom of the pan. So when you cook meat, the brown residual stuff, that's called the fawn. And we want to sort of remove that and just flavor the mushrooms with that. Anyway, once the mushrooms have cooked and softened, I'm also going to throw in the resting juices from the beef. Never waste that stuff. Give it all a good mix and cook it till the mushrooms are almost dry and then just turn off the heat and your mushrooms are ready. Now to assemble the salad I'm just going to take some mixed lettuce. This is just some store bought stuff you can use any kind of lettuce you like. Then I'm going to add in the beef oh yeah and if there are any more resting juices pour them over. And then in go my mushrooms. Oh yeah, they look like noodles almost. If there are any pan juices left, pour those in as well. And finally I'm going to finish it off with some fresh coriander. Just for a little bit of herbiness. And our salad is ready. And it looks delicious. Oh man, that looks so good. And you know what, no more teasing. It's time to pour the dressing over the salad. Oh yeah! And give it all a good mix. 
and there it is guys our keto beef salad with an Asian twist done and dusted well not really dusted but it's about to be eaten hey folks if you enjoyed this video please smash the like button and do subscribe to Headbangers Kitchen for more awesome keto recipes and of course don't forget to hit the bell icon so you get a notification when I upload a new video anyway till the next episode cheers and keep cooking hey folks if you like Headbangers Kitchen and you want to support the channel you can grab some Headbangers Kitchen merchandise links are in the video description box just below this video or you can just watch more Headbangers Kitchen videos. Click here and watch some more of my videos.